Three years ago, Britain's best-selling electric car was the Nissan Leaf. It was smooth, fairly quick, and had some interesting features. Through the major innovation on the Leaf is the e-pedal. It's an accelerator and brake pedal combined. But the Leaf had limited range and took a long time to charge. So myself and my fellow testers felt unconvinced at the time. Yeah, I don't think at the moment I would upgrade my car. Three years on, however, and the Nissan Leaf is no longer the UK's best-selling electric car. It's this, the Tesla Model 3. In June this year, it wasn't just the best-selling electric car, but the best-selling car full stop. Though there is one immediate drawback. It's a lot more expensive than the Leaf. When I tested it, the Leaf range started at around £25,000. The Model 3 range starts at well over £40,000. This particular long-range model is nearly 56,000, which begs the question, how can such an expensive car be Britain's best seller? New tax incentives are one reason. There are now huge cost savings for company car drivers and businesses choosing electric. That's all on top of free road tax. It also happens to be quite a tasty drive. It does 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds. There's a minimalist interior dominated by a large touchscreen, 15 inches in this case, but you don't have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The great positive is that it uh, tells you how much charge you've got left, and if you need to charge en route, it'll direct you to an appropriate charger and tell you how long you need to be there. And that need to charge, of course, brings us on to the hottest topic in EV circles, range. Three years ago, range was my biggest gripe with the Leaf. Nissan claimed you could drive 168 miles on a charge, but I found I got well short of that, particularly if I drove enthusiastically. I started off the day with 158 miles of range on the clock. That was 66 miles ago. My range is down to 37 miles. Thankfully, batteries and their capacities have improved a bit since 2018. The updated top-of-the-range Leaf now claims 239 miles on a single charge. And Kia's brand-new EV6, for example, promises 314 miles. But the Model 3 I'm driving trumps them both. The Tesla has a claimed range of 360 miles. Though I'm also getting a bit short of that as well. I've done 66 miles in this since setting off, and the range meter has gone down by 87 miles. Still not as good as those punchy headline figures the manufacturers claim, but you can drive further without range anxiety. I think in reality you'll be getting about 280, 290 miles on a charge. There's no doubt range has improved over the past three years, but can the same be said for how you charge your EV? Back in 2018, if I wanted to top up my leaf away from home, I had around 8,000 chargers to choose from in the UK. But things have changed. The government recently announced new legislation that will require all new English homes to come with an EV charging point. And last year, the UK's first dedicated EV forecourt was opened in Essex. The total number of chargers across the country now tops 25,000, including new facilities on the all-important motorway network. I'm on my way to Rugby Services, Britain's newest service station, where they have no less than 24 ultra-rapid chargers. One of the largest charging stations in the country, it offers up to 350 kilowatts of class-leading power. But with less than a fifth of UK chargers classed as rapid and many drivers complaining about reliability, EV charging continues to be challenging. There are still lots and lots of confusion and variety of different types of chargers available. And there are lots of different operators and they all charge different prices. Some require you to download their app and register your credit card beforehand. Others allow pay-as-you-go charging. All in all, it's quite a confusing area. In fact, a recent report has said the rollout of EV chargers has fallen well behind what's required. To keep up with demand, 400,000 new public chargers will be needed by 2030, when purely petrol and diesel car sales are to be banned. But one thing that is on track and has seen vast improvements since 2018 is charging rates. Back then, the Nissan Leaf charged at up to 50 kilowatts. The fastest chargers in the UK can now top up your EV at seven times that rate. And today I'm charging at around 150 kilowatts. 
The Tesla has been on charge here for about 15 minutes and I've already got an extra 135 miles of charge. And while I wait for my Tesla to top up, I'm going to take a look at other ways the EV world has moved on since 2018. Virtually all manufacturers now offer EVs, and these three newcomers illustrate how there's now far more choice. This is Ford's first serious all-electric car, the Mustang Mach-E. Purists may object to the legendary sports car name being used on an SUV, but it drives well and incorporates some techie features where you least expect them. The Mustang has a touchscreen in a relatively unusual place, the driver's door pillar. You can unlock the door by tapping in a seven-digit code. There we are. Built on Ford's new global electric platform, the two-wheel drive extended range versions have a claimed range of 379 miles. Then there's the matter of design. Over the past few years, manufacturers have become more daring. This dazzling Hyundai Ioniq 5 disguises its size with bold diagonal slashes, while the retro modern 8-bit details complement its 256-pixel LED headlights. Hyundai's Ioniq 5 is very distinctively styled. It's very roomy inside here, and it's got a movable central console. It really is a comfortable, spacious, family electric car. And finally, we need to talk about cost. EVs still cost more than equivalent petrol or diesel cars, but VW is one manufacturer trying to close the gap. The cheapest versions of its attractive Golf Size ID3 are well beneath the £35,000 maximum to qualify for the £2,500 government electric car grant. A lot of the functions are controlled by this touchscreen in the centre of the dashboard. There's haptic feedback, so you've got reassurance that you've actually touched the screen. The cheapest ID3 keeps costs down by having a smaller battery pack and has fairly modest acceleration, reaching 60 miles an hour in around nine seconds. So, with my Tesla charged up and having spent the day acquainting myself with three years of progress in the EV world, am I convinced that now is the time to go electric? So really, John, where are we with this? Well, I think the improvements in technology and choice, we are now in a position where electric cars can appeal to a, a larger number of people, but I still don't think they're quite right for everybody. I mean, a big sticking point for me is that I don't have a driveway, so I can't actually charge my car easily if I was at home. I mean, that is a big issue. I think you definitely need somewhere off-road to charge it still, um, not only for the convenience, but also to take advantage of lower electricity costs and running costs you get that way. And, John, you and I have been talking for the last few years about whether the time is right for me to purchase an electric car. Mm. Is it now? Well, I still think there is the big problem of cost, uh, because electric cars are still significantly more expensive than petrol and diesel cars, and uh, if you're not in the fortunate position to be able to take advantage of some of these tax breaks, they remain prohibitively expensive, I think. OK, well, thank you for that, John.